You just found the CNC Tech YouTube channel. Hey, what's up? Welcome back. It's Chad from CNC Tech. Glad to see you again. If you haven't been here before, welcome. And we'll get into today's video. This is going to be the first time that I get to show you probably all of the steps that I take in trying to come up with a new uh, solution to a problem, project, you know, whatever it may be. This one happens to be for me. Uh, I'm going to combine some of the videos that I've produced previously with regard to the Razor and the trailer for the Razor with a CNC Tech project. What that means is, I've, I've alluded in previous videos that I'm gonna add lighting to the trailer for the Razor. Uh, I'm gonna do that with 120 volt lights and 12 volt light strips so that I have better lighting in the trailer uh, regardless of where I'm at in, in using the trailer, whether it's just hooked to the truck or whether it's parked in the driveway or running off a generator at a, at a ride site or, or something like that. The trailer came with a little uh, 12 volt LED surface mounted light right inside the man door uh, that you'll see here uh, in a few minutes. My goal is to add to that. So I've planned this out over the last uh, few weeks uh, since I got the trailer. And I've decided that I'm going to put uh, four LED light strips uh, up on the uh, upper part of the walls of the trailer. I'm also going to put two uh, LED floodlights uh, up high on the back above the back door of the trailer that I can use uh, as light when I'm loading the razor or loading whatever else I'm going to use the trailer for. And I'm going to try uh, a little experiment with those floodlights that I'll get into uh, in another video. I think it's going to be pretty cool if it works out. But to control those lights I need some switches because uh, the surface mounted light that's in there has its own little built-in rocker switch and I'm just going to leave that alone. For that I bought, I did some research and I bought this off of Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, for this switch. It looks to be a, a fairly well made switch panel. This is a, a, a marine switch panel. Uh, I believe it's it's considered a three gang marine boat uh, rocker switch panel in black. Uh, 12 volt to 24 volt input. Uh, output 12 to 24 volt and our, there is also two USB uh, 5 volt outputs as well as a, uh, a voltmeter on it. This will allow me to know if, and if, if anybody has ever messed with trailer wiring, the 7 pin connector it can get cor corroded, it can get dirty, it, there can be bad connections. This will let me know that if I have any issues with the lights that I, I put on these circuits uh, and I have a good voltage reading then chances are my problem's in the trailer somewhere and not with the power supply from the truck. It's a fairly well built. These switches feel pretty nice. Um, it's, a, it's a four switch gang. Uh, initially, uh, I believe I'm gonna be using three of the switches and then I'll have a fourth as an auxiliary. Uh, I've got four LED light strips that are going to go in the trailer. I'm going to put two of them on one switch, two of them on another switch, and I'm going to have the third switch for the LED floodlights that I mentioned uh, previously. Now, the reason for the video uh, in the project. Uh, well, just quickly. The panel comes with some uh, pigtails with spade connectors uh, already on them. It comes with a gasket uh, to mount uh, it in your box. 
some mounting screws and there are some um, it's hard to see here but these are labels for the switches you know there's a horn on one a light on one and and so forth so you can label your switches and then there is yeah this is the wiring diagram uh, it, it's fairly extensive um, I don't know maybe my engineering degree will help me you know decipher this set that aside so when I first looked at this switch panel the first thing that I noticed was how deep it is I would like to surface mount uh, this switch panel uh, in a box on the inside just inside the, the, the man door uh, but you know that's gonna have this thing sticking off of the surface of the inside of the trailer about four and a half inches to me that's that's a bit too much so I have some thoughts on what I might be able to do but I need to run out to the trailer to double check a few things. Let's do that and then we'll come back in here and talk about it some more depending on what we find. Okay, here we are out in the trailer. All right, here's the inside of the trailer. There's the walk-in door. This is the 12 volt light, a uh, little pretty inexpensive. Uh, unit that doesn't throw off much light so I'm gonna try to do better and rather than surface mounting that switch like I said uh, I have an idea because these this plywood skin is mounted to rectangular tubing or square tubing depending and the tubing that makes up this trailer looks to be one inch square. At least that's what the roof members are. The walls also look to be one inch. So that means I have a one inch cavity behind the wall so I think what I'm gonna do is come up with a box for that switch panel that surface mounts but recesses the box into that cavity maybe three quarters of an inch or so so we won't be touching the outside skin but we will lose some projection off the face of the wall Let's see how this works out. Man, is it cold out there. It's only about 18 degrees here in southwestern PA today. I cannot wait for this weather to break. But, and what I want to do is I want to design a box to mount this panel that will surface mount to the, pl to the plywood, but recess a portion of this depth needed behind the plywood in into that cavity that we have to work with so that we only have you know three and a half or so inches uh, being surface mounted on the on the face of the wall so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some measurements of this assembly and I will take those measurements and start to model a box in SolidWorks that will ultimately 3D print, test, and hopefully install.
Here we are inside SolidWorks. I'm not intending this video to be a tutorial on SolidWorks. In fact, I'm going to run this at multiple times the real speed. But I am going to show you from start to finish the complete process of modeling the switch box. It's a very fluid process for me as I design and as the model takes shape. I get new ideas and try to incorporate them or not as the model goes along. I'm really pleased with the result and when the model's finished you'll see we'll switch over to the slicer software to get a 3D print going. Here we go. So what you see here is my slicer software for the 3D printer. This is by Tier Time, the company that makes my Cetus 3D uh, 3D printer. It's their software. It's okay um, as a slicer goes. I've never had any trouble with it, and it's done everything I needed it to do. Although it isn't as full featured as some of the others open source uh, programs that are out there in the market. Either way, we're going to get started with the switch box. So I'm going to add a 3D model. I've downloaded it to uh, my computer here, the STL file that you saw me create in SolidWorks. These files come in as metric so you can see the box there much smaller than it needs to be this build volume that you see here for reference is about seven inches by seven inches by seven inches so what i'm going to do here is scale this with a 25.4 to 1 ratio which is metric to english it comes in in millimeters and there we are in inches and I designed this with my printer in mind and as you can see I used literally just about every square inch of platen uh, that I have available. It looks good. We're going to go to our print settings. The print settings give me some capability to change supports and wall thicknesses and pretty much everything that I have set here uh, works fairly well. Uh, I usually use about 65% infill. Uh, if you're not familiar, 3D prints don't print solid. Uh, they use a, a lattice mesh interior with solid shell uh, interior exterior walls roofs and floors the material that i'm using is kodak uh, pla tough it's a good quality material it's not cheap but the uh, supports and rafts tend to break away fairly easy so let's take a look at, with these settings you can see up here it's slicing. So at 0.3 millimeter layer thickness, I'm going to have 396 layers to go from the platen all the way to the top of the part. When this is done, it will change colors and the part I believe turns blue and all of the supports and raft will be yellow. And it'll give us an estimate of time and material usage. Thank you. 
So there we go. Flat surf finished surfaces are green. Uh, the body that will be extruded is blue and the rafts and supports are yellow. So you see what's going to be printed and all of the yellow when we're done with this part will be broken away. So we're going to use most of a spool of material so I don't want to mess this up at 812 grams of material down here in the lower right next to the print button and you can see uh, based on the current settings it's going to take 21.3 hours so let's exit this preview and go back and look at our settings again let, for this particular part let me switch to 20% uh, fill and let's go to 0.35 millimeters and see what that does for us. So we lost 20-ish uh, layers. I can't remember the exact number previously. feel like the Jeopardy theme song should be playing here. Okay, so we're up to, we're around 861 grams. Again, most of a one kilogram spool of material. Uh, the, the filament I'm using is 1.75 millimeters on a brand new one kilogram spool. We're down to 16.9 hours, which would be sometime tomorrow morning and I think we're gonna probably go with that that should do an alright job on this part I believe and I have to reset at 1000 grams for the new spool because if I don't it will tell me I don't have enough material available and it won't have a successful print so now that that is set We will preview it one last time. Cue the Jeopardy theme. have the same outcome so that's always a good sign and we are going to send that to the printer and what it'll do you can see is it is downloading via USB the cut and layers now I feel like a stopwatch needs to be playing here or something like that ten nine eight seven six five four three two one blast off what it's doing now you can see up here this is the temperature readout of so we're at about 11 30 ish 11 o'clock up here in the top uh, header we're counting up this is the temperature of the print extruder head the extruder head this is going to have to get up to around 200 degrees C before the printer will start printing. Once the printer starts, I will end the screen capture here. I think I have the PLA Tough set a little higher. There we go, 210C.
here we are back a day or so later now we're to one of the more satisfying parts of the 3d printing process well first there's the most frustrating part what you see here is the first print that I started I started this at probably 8 o'clock at night or so thought I'd let it run for 16 hours you know overnight into the next day and have a finished part well I got up the next morning looked at the camera that I had pointed at the printer that I was taking the printing video on and lo and behold something happened I came down to the office and found the spool of filament had fallen off its uh, feed rack and jammed up and the printer quit printing so it ran for I don't know 10 hours or so uh, not doing anything so there's the frustrating part I went back I, I got everything put back together uh, changed a few things that I thought were a problem for the spool coming off that has never happened before and a little over 16 hours later we have a finished part I haven't done any cleaning or removal of the support structure yet you can see that uh, I didn't set this up for the finest to print quality uh, as I mentioned because it would have taken taken 24 hours or more uh, to do that and for this switch box uh, I didn't think it was necessary I'm, I'm so far I'm really pleased with the outcome I don't see any major DLAMs or anything like that I'm gonna get started cleaning this up and we'll see what the what the part looks like when it's clean. So what you're seeing here is when you look at some of the settings that we had in the slicer, uh, you'll have the easy peel setting and that basically changes the feed rate and the temperature of the extruder where these supports meet your finished part and it creates a joint uh, that's meant to come apart like this. And the more complex your part, uh, the more difficult it is sometimes to weed these parts because the, the support mechanisms and the rafts and so forth end up intertwining to create a matrix that, you know, basically supports itself very well. And it, it, it's counterintuitive to what you're, you're trying to do. Um, but in the end, it makes for uh, a pretty good part. Now, I have fairly thick sections, uh, 200 thousandths of an inch or so, on some of these surfaces. When you're doing this weeding or uh, peeling, and you, if you have uh, a lot of fine detail in your parts and you have thin sections, then you're gonna wanna be 
uh, obviously very careful doing this because you can actually break uh, the part uh, away from uh, you know you can damage your, your, your finished part stuff that you didn't intend to peel away and I always have a, a number of tools my mini uh, plier set my razor knife, you know, anything that might might help uh, with the with the process. Sometimes I get a corner peeled, and then I switch over to the razor knife to to try to help separate those flat panels. Internal cavities can be very difficult to strip like this because I have an internal flange It had to put support material all around the inside And that can make things very difficult Although uh, This one isn't doing too bad a lot of the difficulty or lack thereof in doing this has to do with the quality of the filament that you use as well. Uh, and it can range for a one kilogram spool from 16 or $17 all the way up to 50-ish dollars for different types of PLA. This is Kodak brand PLA Tough. Uh, it's about $41 a spool, and I use most of a spool on, on this. But the material is stronger, uh, and it, it tends to clean much easier than less expensive uh, materials. When you don't have a lot of cleaning to do, the, the less expensive material works well for for prototyping and uh, fit up checks where you're just going to check something quickly and you know and throw 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 the, the part away later on since this is a, an actual uh, final product you know I wanted good material and the ability to, to use the part and, and have it clean because I knew some of this was going to be very difficult. And frankly, I don't consider that difficult at all. That, that came out nice. So, barring some extra clean up here and there, I gotta say, I'm I'm pretty happy with that part. Now, for the true test, does our switch panel fit? Like a glove, just like it was designed to fit in there. Go figure. I'm pretty happy with that. I hope you can see it. Now let me give you a little tour of what I did here. Yeah, I could have used a, a regular surface mount, double gang, uh, box, bought at Home Depot, Lowe's, something like that. And this would have fit. But as I I believe I mentioned in the beginning the wiring here with the inline fuses which are which are nice to have on a 12 volt uh, switch panel and the spade connectors that were used in the way it's wired makes it easy to trace everything but it, it makes it for a fairly deep uh, assembly 
So as I started to think about it and, and think about what I wanted out of this, you know, uh, you know, you got the four switches, you have the voltmeter, but you also have the USB port. Obviously, we all have our GoPros, our cell phones, our, our anything that's USB powered. So I thought, being in the trailer like that, if I end up ever camping in it or even just spending a long weekend in it, you know, riding a Razor or what have you, it would be nice to use my imagination. So what we have, I made the top uh, a tray. You can put your keys in there, keys to the locks, extra change, uh, whatever. I put some drain slots in it so that if if it happens to get uh, damp or, or wet being near the man door, it wouldn't fill up with, with water. You're probably wondering maybe what the pockets on the side are for. They're twofold. One, you can put some pens or pencils or markers in it. It also has an oval drain uh, slash access hole because if I did this close to right, you can put your your cell phone in there one on on each side and you have access to and I don't have a charging cord by me but you do have access to the charging port uh, so you can have your cable a short cable plugged into the USB port coming in here and you can leave your phone in there and it's not coming out. This is a 13 Pro Max, one of the larger phones, so this should fit most of the phones out there. I also put uh, on the inside, I have two holes, one top and one, one top, one bottom. This will allow me to run my 12 volt wire uh, in and out of the box. It also provides uh, a bit of a drain solution for it. And then what you see here on the bottom, you're probably wondering why, you know, why did he put all this flange in here with all these holes? Well, the trailer that I have currently has three padlocks for it. Two for the rear swing down door, uh, and one for the man door. Actually four. I do have a padlock for the tongue. So that's what these are for. I can take those locks when they're not being used. I can hook them in the holes here and they'll be safe. Uh, won't lose them. And you know when it's time to lock back up and, and go, you grab them and, and put them on. Last but not least, I always have to put the branding, the CNC Tech logo on there. So there we go. I am really, really happy uh, with this. Oh, you can also see the countersunk screw holes for mounting it to the, uh, plat the, the plywood walls in the trailer. And I actually put the flange all the way around it so that the hole that I cut in the plywood to recess the box um, doesn't have to be quite so pretty and this will trim everything out. Anyway, there you go. Uh, in another video coming up you'll see the switch panel mounted in the box. Uh, I've got some other experiments to do with the wiring for the lighting with some uh, 12 volt uh, relays to do some relay logic for the lights to work the way that I want them to. So that will be in an upcoming video. Hope you like this project. If you did, I gotta ask you, smash that subscribe button. Go ahead, I'll wait. It doesn't take long.
Hey, there you go. I appreciate that. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the like. Hit that bell. Ring that bell so that you know when new videos drop. Like and share. You know, all those things that all the YouTubers say. It really does help, and I really do appreciate the support. Thank you. See you next time.